Facebook, and if you have a hymnal, you can turn it to 84, and shelter in the time of storm. Let's sing that, all right? Number 284, shelter in the time of storm. The Lord's our rock. Retreat. 
church said amen and the car said honk good good i'm glad we've got a few honkers out there wonderful wonderful welcome welcome again to grace baptist church and welcome church families great to see you on this beautiful spring morning and those of you who are joining us by facebook live welcome welcome I want to thank you for joining us and being a part with us. Let's worship the Lord together this morning. Oh, there's so much to praise the Lord about. But let's turn over there to number 281. 281. Yesterday, today, forever. Jesus is the same. Amen. He never changes. Our society may change. Our government may change. Our friends may change. Our jobs may change. But Jesus never changes. Awesome, awesome, awesome God. 281. We'll sing three of these verses, all right? to be lifted in just a few hours 
They set it for 11.59 tonight. That doesn't much leave much time in church. You know, on Sunday, 11.59 turns to 12 midnight. Now it's Monday. They can't. Oh, well. But anyways, they, they have their ways. But um, hallelujah, God will have his way. There is a, a light at the end of this dark tunnel. And so I'm just praising the Lord for it. Uh, our first reopening service where we're going to invite folks to come in. Of course, we'll be observing social distancing, but uh, will be Wednesday night, May the 6th. And so that will be wonderful. Now, we will have service tonight at 6 o'clock, and I'll probably be out front. It's supposed to be a beautiful afternoon and evening. And so I'll be preaching outside and um, again, but um, just to maintain that social distancing. But I'm so excited you're here, and I'm excited to be able to sing and worship and pray together. Why don't we pray right now and ask the Lord to meet with us? Father in heaven, you are so good. You've blessed us with a wonderful day. Thank you for the rain. Just a good little refreshing there, and oh, how we needed it. But now, Father, I ask you for the rain of heaven. Oh, Spirit of God, come down and, and do a mighty work. May your presence melt those mountains of unbelief and sin that we often are harboring. And God, draw us to yourself. Use your word to break the stone in pieces. Use your word like a fire to consume the dross and to purify the gold. God of heaven, I pray that you'd meet with us in power as we seek to serve you. And bless all those who are listening, and Father especially, those who are unsaved. Reveal to them their condition of a lack of salvation. And I pray, Father, that they would come to faith in Christ, even today, during the preaching and during this time. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. All right, well, we're in a new month, and now it's time for a new scripture song. So, take those Bibles. Open them up to Psalm chapter 20. Psalm 20 and verse 7. Now this song has a few little claps in the... But it's only one verse, and so it's really simple. And I think you'll enjoy it. I'll sing it for you first, and then I'll have you clap with me and sing with me, all right? It goes like this. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. in there when it says the name of the Lord our God the name of the Lord our God we will remember the name of the Lord our God what's that? Don't hold the word God too long. okay don't hold some of those notes too long but follow your pastor alright you'll be alright okay here we go some trust in chariots and some in horses but we will remember the name scripture on the fact that God is faithful. Now today's Bible verse was Hebrews 10.23 that we needed to memorize. That's Hebrews 10.23. I recommend you turning there if you don't have it memorized. But we have several verses that we've put together and we've memorized over the past five weeks. And I trust that you remember them. And they say that God is faithful. Let's do 1 Thessalonians 5.24 first. 1 Thessalonians 5.24 
Faithful is he that calleth you, who will also will do it. Amen. Then there's Deuteronomy 7, verse 9. Know therefore the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him, and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Amen. Then there's Lamentation, my favorite. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23 says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh, I love that verse. That's great. Then there is 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse 3. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Now, Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold fast our profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. Isn't that a great verse? He is faithful that promised. All right, well, let's sing one more song, and then I'm going to get out front and do some preaching. All right, turn to number 264, 264, there in that songbook, The Solid Rock. Amen. 264, so glad you've joined us again. Thank God for all the people who are meeting with us here this morning. Uh, this is so fun. 263. 264. Outside. This is this is the time we want to remember by way of pictures. Three or four years from now, we're going to say what we do, and it'll be nice to look at some pictures of everybody parked along the, the streets and, and pastors standing out front and all that stuff. All right, amen. This is amazing. Thank the Lord. Well, you can be taking your Bibles, if you would, please, and open them up to Proverbs chapter 21 here this, this morning. Proverbs chapter 21. Again, I want to say Wednesday night will be our first in-house reopening. It's going to be with restrictions and things, but I'll be texting you, letting you know what, 
all that is, but uh, we're going to need some help sanitizing and things like that, and so we need folks who will volunteer. Oh, I needed to mention also, we memorized all these verses on the faithfulness of God. I thought, boy, there's just so many verses on God being faithful. Let's memorize one more, and most of you have already got it memorized, just to make it a memory verse, and that's 1 John 1.9. 1 John 1.9. If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just. Amen? Faithful God. Hallelujah. And uh, so... Uh, thank the Lord for again all our missions givers continue to give and if you've not been able to give for the last few uh, weeks make up for lost time folks let's uh, let's be faithful to those missionaries who are really struggling out there on the mission field next Sunday is Mother's Day I am looking forward to that there will not be any Sunday school next Sunday but I do want us to meet at 10 o'clock for a church-wide prayer meeting next Sunday morning and for an hour there we'll have uh, we'll bring some donuts and things and coffee for fellowship. But I want us to, to pray together before the service next Sunday. And so that'll be fun. I'll be explaining more about that come Wednesday night. But right now, let's get to some preaching. Amen? Amen? Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs 21 and verse 31. The last verse in that great chapter. Um, our world has been forever changed as a result of the coronavirus. Honestly, folks, we'll never be the same. Uh, I was hoping we'd be able to get back to being just like it was and how it was normally back uh, three months ago. Uh, that's probably not going to happen. Um, uh, things are different now. Because of this health crisis, our world is, uh, is different. But this thing came along and really struck a nerve with people. Here the, uh, the, uh, the virus uh, caused the entire world all at once to face their own mortality. To realize how fragile humanity really is. The Bible says all men are as grass. And you can see how the grass is faring right here. It's here today and it's gone tomorrow. And when people are faced with that, boy, it strikes fear in their hearts. And, and, um, and it's uh, okay to be careful for life, and we want to do that. But uh, the whole world was made aware that we are subject to something that's invisible and something that's powerful and something that we cannot control. And uh, let me just say this about fear. Fear is one of Satan's favorite tricks. Satan uses it as a weapon to get us to disobey God. And we've got to be aware of that. One great uh, military soldier back in World War II said this as the Germans were bombing the, uh, uh, England. They said, you don't need an army to conquer a nation. All you need is fear. And if you can make people afraid, you've got them. You have got them. Absolutely. And I want to hasten to say also that inordinate fear, and all these phobias and things that have been coming up and people have, uh, these are things that uh, are not natural and normal, folks. Um, inordinate fear is one of God's great judgments upon a nation that has turned its back on God. And you can read about that in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 28, and also verses 65 and 66 of Deuteronomy 28. God says, I'll send fear upon them, and their hearts will fail them for fear. Well, fear certainly has gripped our nation. But Proverbs 28, verse 1 says, The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Now, how do you interpret that verse? The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Well, folks, that means 
Righteousness promotes faith in the right one. If your faith is in your government or in your doctor or in your uh, society, for it, you've got a shaky foundation. But if your faith and trust is in God, it gives you confidence to know what you're doing is right and, and if it's according to God's will. And it means that God is going to take care of you even in the face of danger. And as we go back into this mode of trying to reopen our church and and continue and to begin to reach out and to care for people in a greater way as a church body there's going to be a lot of fears but i want to encourage you the wicked flee when no man pursue it but the righteous are bold as a lion and that's why we picked that psalm uh, 20 and verse 7 it says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember what? Name. The name of the Lord our God. Indeed, the name of the Lord our God. And uh, uh, our text here today in, in Proverbs 21 and verse 31 is a statement uh, mainly about military issues. But I think it applies to every issue because this this verse balances the um, the beautiful balance of proper perspective and proper preparation. Yes, we need to be prepared. We need to be careful. We don't need to throw caution to the wind and 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 be foolish. But on the other hand, ultimately. Our lives are in God's hands. And we must do what God calls us to do. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, now all of us agree that war would be a very risky adventure. Amen. But it depends on the Lord whether you come back home dead or alive in a war. And wars are really crazy. You'd think some people would never die and there they, their lives are snuffed out. The truth is, folks, like we said last week in, uh, in our message last week, our, our lives are in the hands of the Lord. <laughs> well, if it's true that in battle, safety is of the Lord, then it's true in every area of life that safety is of the Lord. Can we read Proverbs 21 and verse 31? And then we'll pray. And then we'll preach for just a little bit here. Proverbs 21, 31. Read out loud with me. The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Let's read it one more time, real simple. The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. The title of the message today is Safety is of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for loving us and giving us your word. Thank you for reminding us where to place our trust. Lord, if any under the sound of my voice are not trusting in Christ for salvation, I pray today would be the day, now would be the time they turn from self and from sin and put their faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And then others, Lord, who have trusted Christ, Lord, and if they are putting more hope in the doctors or more hope in the government or more hope in the, uh, this world, I pray, Lord, that they would shift their trust back to you as a result of this message. I ask it in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. Take evaluation right now of how many risks do you take a day? Think about it. Think about it. Right now I'm risking, I hear my favorite motorcyclist right now. He has no muffler on his motorcycle. And I'm afraid he's going to drive right by here and you'll not hear me when he comes. 
Here he comes. Let's let him go by. Wave, smile. Say, get a muffler, dude. Get a muffler. Amen. <laughs> he does that every day. All right. <laughs> How many risks do you take in a day? Think about it. You know, it's actually a risk just to get out of bed. <laughs> it's a risk to eat food. You know, there could be poison in your food. Uh, uh, that if you're eating out of a can or out of a packaged food, you don't know if while that stuff was coming down the assembly line and they were packing it, some guy just decided he was going to hawk a goober right there in your meal. Yeah. How do you know he didn't do that? You say, I'd see it. I'm just saying, you're taking a risk every time you breathe just about. And of course, with the coronavirus, if you breathe in one of those tiny little germs, you got it. Now, let me just say something real clearly. Getting the coronavirus is not even as dangerous as getting the regular flu. Last year, over 60,000 people died from the regular flu. We did not shut down America. We did not shut down the economy. We did not quarantine. 60,000 people died. To date, I think there's only about 50,000 who have died from the coronavirus. There's only a 1% chance of dying if you catch the virus. That's not real high danger zone. It's more risky to drive your automobile on a, on a highway to die than it is to catch the coronavirus. I'm saying, folks, every day is a risk. We take risks, and we don't even think twice about it. Think about it. Some of you take medicine, and Brother Bart can help us with this. You're trusting that a doctor knew what he was doing when he prescribed that medicine. You're trusting someone like a pharmacist, pharma, pharmacist that can read that prescription and give you the right prescription. Think of the risk involved. If you took something that wasn't right, and then you're trusting that the dosage and the actual medicine itself that came from China <coughs> might have something wrong with it. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying, folks, it's risky to live. But we didn't think anything about it three months ago. <laughs> and so I think it's time for us to say this phrase together. Safety is of the Lord. Can you, can you say it with me? Safety is of the Lord. Let's say it again. Safety is of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, think about it. What do people depend on today for safety? Well... I grew up, and this tells my age, I grew up before there were safety belts in automobiles. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding. We didn't think. Here's a new. I grew up in a day that children were not in safety seats. How did anybody live? I don't know. <laughs> safety is of the Lord is all I can say. Say, well, a lot of people died. Well, yeah, probably so. But I'm just saying, uh, um, some people are superstitious about what they depend on for safety. Um, some people carry a little rabbit's foot on their belt loop. You know, that's their good luck charm. <laughs> some wear a little bracelet that's supposed to bring them good luck. Some have a, this little necklace with a little metal on it that has St. Christopher on it. That's supposed to keep them safe. Um, some have statues and man-made patron saints in their cars. Uh, and that statue's supposed to keep them uh, from having a wreck <laughs> or being hurt in the wreck. What do you depend on for your safety? Some folks say, my doctor, he is trustworthy. My government will take care of me. Okay. The Bible says safety is of the Lord. 
safety is of the Lord. And I want to serve notice here this morning. And here's the crux of the message. God is concerned of who you are trusting in for your safety. Amen. In fact, I'm going to go a step further. God is offended when we are not trusting him for our safety. Amen. You say, do you got Bible for that? I'm glad you asked. Turn with me to Psalm chapter 33. Psalm 33. The rest of the message will be having Bible to back those statements up. Psalm 33 verses 16 through 20. It says, There is no king saved by the multitude of an host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. Verse 17. A horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Now you have to understand when this was written, that was the main military strength. I mean, if you didn't have men, you didn't have horses, you didn't have an army, and you couldn't defend your nation, you were not safe. The Bible's saying differently. I love verse 18. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that what? Fear him. Respect him. Rest in him. Trust in him. Amen? Upon them that hope in his mercy. Verse 19. To deliver their soul from death and to keep them what? Alive, Alive in famine. Look at verse 20. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Amen. Uh, drop over there to chapter 34 Psalms. And look at verse 7. Look at, look at what God provides for his children. Psalm 34 verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. You say, Pastor, would you describe that? Friend, that verse is clear enough. Doesn't need any description. Clearly saying God protects his children. Safety is of the Lord. Well, let's all take our Bibles now to 2 Kings chapter 1. 2 Kings chapter 1. Will you follow me here? Oh, this is a great story. I love this passage. I've been reading through 1 2 Kings, 1 and 2 Chronicles in my daily Bible reading recently, and this just really came alive. Now follow me. A little bit of background. The northern tribes of Israel had been ruled by one bad king after another. They never had a good king. And the worst king they ever had was King Ahab and his wicked wife Jezebel. And honestly, I don't know who ruled the country, either Ahab or Jezebel. But the choice was clearly a bad one either way you go. Well, God judged those wicked, that wicked couple and, and had them executed in a most gruesome way <coughs> but now King Ahab's son is in charge of the northern tribe King Ahab's son's name is Ahaziah and we run into him in 2 Kings chapter 1 and verse 2 it says and Ahaziah fell through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick now hold on just a minute, folks. You've heard of a safe space? I need my safe space. You ever heard anybody say that? I need my safe space. Well, what is a more safe space than your house? Your own home. You say, I'll never die in my own home. Well, tell that to Ahaziah. He's walking across the, the room up there and he falls through the lattice in the flooring and it injures him in such a way that he's dying he's sick and I'm going to assume he's caught infection from the injuries of falling through the lattice in his roof and or ladder uh, in, in his into his inner chamber upper chamber there and he was sick now what do you do when you're sick and dying you call the doctor, right? Well, King Ahaziah 
because of his upbringing, only knew to call on the, the idols that his parents had trained him in. Look what happens. And he sent mess. I'm in the middle of verse 2. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go, inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. So who's he trusting in? Could he say, safety is of the Lord? <laughs> no. No. Safety is of Beelzebub, according to him. Look at verse 3. And the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, that's the prophet of God. God texted him, special message. Arise, go up to meet the messenger of the king of Samaria and say unto them, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? What's Elijah's message? Eli Elijah's message to Ahaziah is, isn't there a God in heaven you can call on? Who are you trusting in, man? Well, because he wasn't trusting in the Lord. Look what happens. Verse 4. Now therefore thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And Elijah departed. <laughs> it's a great story that follows. Instead of Ahaziah getting real convicted of his sin and repenting like everybody should when they hear the word of God instead of getting right he gets mad and he sends 50 of his armed soldiers to go get that Elijah guy and they see Elijah up on a hill and they say oh thou man of God come down and Elijah says if I be a man of God let fire fall from heaven and consume all 50 of you boom it happened. Oh, you would think that did it. Ahaziah should say, Oh, God, he is the Lord. God, he is. No, not Ahaziah. He sent another 50. Did the same thing. Boom. Here comes fire from heaven. Now, I don't know. I'm not too smart. But man, that is dumb if you're going to send 50 more the third time. But he does a third time. <laughs> Now that's another part of the story, but I'm just saying, Ahaziah was resting in someone other than the Lord, and it offended God. Can you say amen about that? That's the point. That's the point. Let's look at a, a, a second king over here in 2 Chronicles chapter 16. 2 Chronicles chapter 16. Here's a great passage. Another king here has an opportunity to depend on the Lord. And this is King Asa. Now, folks, King Asa was a good king. In fact, he did so many great things. Oh, to study King Asa's life, he was a king of the southern tribe of Judah. And the southern tribes of Judah had several good kings. And Asa was one of them. But you know what? In the latter part of Asa's life, he backslid. What? Yeah, he quit trusting the Lord and started trusting man. Some trust in chariots, some, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Asa didn't remember the name of the Lord his God, and he got in a fix, and rather than trusting God he calls on a nation to come and help him fight a war well you can see it over there in verse 7 now Hanani the seer or the prophet of God in verse 7 of chapter 16 says to king Asa king of Judah and said unto him because thou hast what's the next word relied. that's trusted that's rested because thou hast relied on the king of Syria and not what's the next word relied on the Lord thy God therefore is this host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand in other words you have failed Asa now when Asa heard that you'd think he'd say you know what you're right uh, Hanani the preacher you're right 
God's word is true. I trusted in man. I failed. I want to get right with God. Lead me back to God. That's what he should have said. Amen. But that's not what he said. And when you're backslidden and you're rebuked about your sin, you either get mad or you get right. And Asa was no exception. He got mad. What did he do? Well, you see verse 10. And Asa was wroth with the seer and put him in a prison house. Because he could. Whoa, there's a government turning on the righteous people. Hmm. It says, for he was in a rage. <laughs> Anger. He was rebuked and he was mad. But drop on down in verse 12 of this same chapter. Because his lack of trust in God continues and it offends God. Look at verse 12. And Asa, in his 39th year of his reign, was what? Disease in his feet until his disease was exceeding great. Yet in his disease, what did he do? He sought not the Lord, but to the physicians. Now, folks, don't get me wrong. You should go to the doctor when you need to go to the doctor. But before you ever go to the doctor, go to Jesus! Get on your face and say, God, is there something here you're trying to say to me? I'm asking you to heal me, but show me what you're trying to teach me through this difficulty. Friend, if you fail to trust God and you go and try to fix it yourself, you are offending a holy God who wants you to trust in Him. Well, question, do you think the physicians healed Asa? No, because safety is of the Lord, say it with me. Safety is of the Lord. One more time. Safety is of the Lord. Well, one of my favorite passages on this subject is over there in 2 Kings chapter 18. 2 Kings 18. Everybody doing okay? We're having a fun time just, just getting our faith back where it needs to be, trusting solidly in, in what God has said in His Word. 2 Kings chapter 18. Hezekiah, one of the best kings of the southern tribes. Hezekiah, great guy. Made many great strides forward. But mark it down, brothers and sisters. Anytime you are stepping forward for God and making an impact into the devil's kingdom, you're going to get a pushback. The devil's going to kick and squall and fight. Don't think that serving God is an easy walk in the park. It's not. Every day and every way you have to call on the Lord. You spend your time on your knees a lot working through things. Well, Hezekiah did some great reforms and here comes the king of Syria's army. Sennacherib is, uh, he's called Sennacherib in one area, but this one uh, here he's called um, in verse 20, uh, or verse 19 of chapter 18 of 2 Kings, he's called Rabshakeh. But look at verse 19 here. Um, this, uh, this wicked leader of the army completely surrounds Hezekiah in Jerusalem. It's a siege, folks. They're going to starve them out. This huge, massive, strong army is surrounding Hezekiah and his kingdom. But Hezekiah and his kingdom and his little town there in Jerusalem has got walls around it. And so they're safe, kind of, <laughs> till they run out of food. <laughs> now Rabshakeh starts spewing out all these words to psychologically create fear in people's minds. Church family, brothers and sisters in Christ, the devil has not stopped doing that. He is still speaking fear. And you've got to be sensitive enough to know what to fear and what not to fear. Well, Rabshakeh here, in verse 19, he says, And Rabshakeh said, 
Speak down to Hezekiah, thus saith the king, the king of Assyria. What confidence is this wherein thou trustest? In other words, who are you trusting in? You don't stand a chance, little, little kingdom here. You, you're just a little bug. We're about to squash you. Who are you trusting in? Verse 20. Thou sayest, but they are but vain words. I have counsel and strength for war. Now on whom dost thou trust that thou rebellest against me? This is the wicked Sennacherib, or Rabshakeh, saying these words. Look at verse 21. But now behold, thou trustest upon the, uh, the staff of this bruised reed, Egypt. In other words, are you calling Egypt to come and rescue you? The Egyptian army to come and, and save you? <laughs> verse 22. But if you say unto me, We trust in the Lord our God. Can you hear Sennacherib's mocking voice? He says, if you say to me, we're trusting in the Lord our God. He says, is it not he whose places and whose altars Hezekiah hath taken away and hath said to Judah and Jerusalem, you shall worship before the altar in Jerusalem? <laughs> and so he's saying, God's already pronounced judgment on you. And I'm here in God's place to and then he gets really in bad shape. Look down to verse 29. Thus saith the king, Let not Hezekiah, that's the king, deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you out of his hand. Neither let Hezekiah make you, what? Trust, Trust in the Lord. Now can you imagine that? That's like what the devil's saying to some of you right now. Don't let that Pastor Kagan make you trust in God. Don't let him make you do that. You'll be so sorry. Boy, what a liar. Amen. He, he didn't get away with it, though. He spewed all kinds of blasphemies about God, and the next morning he woke up, and his entire army was dead. Amen. Dead. <laughs> He said, I got to go home and check on some things. <laughs> he went back and checked on some things back at home. While he's kneeling down worshiping a false idol, his own two sons come and kill him. My point is, safety is of the Lord. Let's say it together. Safety is of the Lord. Now, I just want to encourage you this morning. We're going to come through this thing, and we're going to be better through this coronavirus. We're going to not only survive, we're going to thrive, church family. It's going to be, God's going to take us and he's going to use us and he's going to do some great things. Would you turn with me to Psalm 91, Psalm chapter 91, and let's just read some great encouraging words that back up this truth that safety is of the Lord. Say it out loud with me, will you please? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, if you're not getting that, if you're not understanding that, you need to just read that over and over and over. Let that settle in, friend. Look at verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Amen? Verse 3. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Anybody know what a noisome pestilence is? Coronavirus. Coronavirus and the media. Amen. A noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, verse 4, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Friend, if you got a Bible, you got a treasure. Amen? His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. 
Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Now notice verse 6. Those of you who are deathly afraid of this virus. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. What's that verse saying? That verse is saying safety is of the Lord. God's going to protect you. You are indestructible until God is through with you. Or until you decide you're going to trust in something other than God. And then God turns you over to that trust and lets the ravages of that false hope take you down. I don't know about you. As for me and my house, we're going to trust the Lord. We're going to rest in God. And when God is through with us, we're going home. But we're going to go home trusting the Lord. Now we've got to trust the Lord for safety, but also we've got to trust the Lord for, for salvation. And some who, under the sound of my voice, you've never been saved. You're still trusting how good you are to get you to heaven. That's a false hope, friend. You'll never be good enough. It's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saves us. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. God has commanded us to trust in him for salvation. And God has commanded us to trust in him for safety. Let's say our memory verse there. Safety is of the Lord. Let's say it again. Safety is of the Lord. One more time. Safety is of the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, thank you again for another great opportunity on a Sunday morning to preach in some beautiful weather and to be around some beautiful people. Thank you, Father, for this gift and privilege. Now I ask in Jesus' name... If there's any under the sound of my voice that have never before truly trusted Christ, might they utter a prayer of faith right now, calling on you and asking you to forgive them and asking you, Lord Jesus, to come into their lives and to change them and to save them and to give them that free gift of eternal life. And then, Father, if there be any aces among us who, though we be good and be saved, and, and have trusted the Lord in past times. Deliver us, God, from being like Asa, shifting our trust in our old age to the strength of man. God of heaven, deliver us from backsliding saints and fill us with your spirit and draw us back to yourself that we could be a glowing testimony in our latter years of a of a of a sold out Christian who's still growing and glowing and going for Jesus. I pray your blessing now upon every person who's listened. May they take the word of God to heart and may they be safe in your hands. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. And amen. Let's sing our scripture verse. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. The name of the Lord our God. The name of the Lord our God. We will remember the name of the Lord our God. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Somebody say amen. 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 Thank you for being in the house of the Lord, or near the house of the Lord today. Amen. <laughs> God bless. Get around and, and, uh, and say howdy at a distance, all right? <laughs> howdy, at a distance. howdy at a distance, all right? <laughs>